Hello and welcome back to this video series in which we're deconstructing my YouTube setup and today we're talking about Cubase. So inputs and outputs into and from Cubase. Now I use the control room. This is a feature only available in Cubase Pro. It's not absolutely essential, but uh, in this video I'll explain why, why I have the setup that I do. So let's have a look at inputs first. And the first thing that you might notice that's a bit weird is that there's no microphone input. So we've got guitar in, and when we have a look at them, they're coming in on inputs five and six, as we saw in our focus right video. And this means that if I have a guitar track and it's set to the guitar in input, when I monitor it, I've got the guitar sat on the table over here behind me. Nice and simple. The vocals, however, you'll see that input is set to talk back. And when we had a look in our audio connections, there's no such thing. This is a control room feature. So if we jump over to control room, now you can see talk back is a mono input and it's coming in on channel three. Referring back to our focus right video, channel three is the microphone input. And there you can see it. So what this means is basically it's detached from the mixer. That's the big deal. So I can click this talkback button down here. And when I turn it back on, you can hear me. If I had the uh, microphone routed to a regular input channel and clicked solo on a track and attempted to talk over the top of it, which I do during my videos, then the track would be muted. So as with the setup that I have right now, if I have my, my microphone routed into Cubase rather than completely standalone, then I would face problems with soloing the tracks. The reason I'm sending the microphone into Cubase um, is to do with the episode that will, when, when we come to deal with OBS, you'll see uh, the problems that you have with SEO drivers and OBS. And it's been a nightmare. The last year, I would say the, the single biggest problem by far in me managing this setup and you know producing YouTube content for you has been managing SEO drivers. It's just been an absolute nightmare. What I basically had to do until I came up with this control room solution, and I figured this out, I, I haven't actually come across anybody else who uses this solution and I'm waiting for somebody to tell me what's wrong with it because it works for me. And when I was trying to solve this problem and doing all the internet research, the only solution I was able to come up with and the one that I'd used up until last week was by installing a software, a piece of software called Voice Meter. And it allows you to install virtual ASIO drivers into your system. So when I was doing a video, going to studio setup, I would have to do this for every single time I wanted to make a video. Head over to audio system, select voice meter virtual ASIO, and then run software on my computer called voice meter, which you, you can download from the internet. And it basically allows you to have these virtual ASIO drivers. Cubase would then go from a latency of like six and a half milliseconds up to about 50 or 60 milliseconds. And if you hit a key on the keyboard, there was a noticeable lag. It was a, just a horrible situation. And I had to do that in order to give control of the ASIO driver to OBS. Now I'll deal with ASIO completely when we come on to the OBS um, episode because that's where all the problems lay. If Cubase is the only ASIO centric piece of software you have on your system, you're never gonna hit any of these problems. But fundamentally, ASIO only works on one piece of software at a time and you've gotta pick which one it gets. So I had to give a virtual driver to Cubase in order to hand the ASIO driver to OBS. I don't have to do any of that anymore. Cubase can run in native ASIO mode with its beautiful six millisecond latency and all of the output is getting routed to OBS. In the Focusrite video last time, um, I showed you a couple of light uh, cables coming out of outputs three and four and in, into inputs one and two on my Focusrite. That's the secret ingredient that allows OBS to work with this configuration. But we'll deal with that in the OBS video. So a very quick rundown of the control room because it's part of the input and output setup. 
Now that I've got this talkback channel uh, configured, I can get rid of some. My room is so noisy. Have a listen to this. It's so loud. Can you hear that hum? That's my PC fan. Now I can get rid of most of it with this denoise function, which is really fantastic and I've only really recently started using. And then the gate takes the rest away during the periods of complete silence. This is where we configure the metronome. If you use the control room, make sure you turn this metronome button on because if you don't and you engage record, even though I have the metronome engaged, you don't hear it. These cues, let's have a look back in audio connections. So you can have multiple cues set up. I'm absolutely scratching the surface of control room. I use a very, very light touch. The very few of the features um, are of interest to me. I'm not routing to multiple destinations. I don't have studio engineers wanting, you know, separate monitor mixes. But you create one of these cue bases. These are your master outputs. This also means that in the outputs page, you have nothing connected. You still have a stereo out, and that means that on your mix console, you have a fader for your stereo out, but they're not actually connected to anything. So this is the, 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 the setup that I have for control room. Like I say, it's very, very light touch, really, really simple. If you don't have Cubase Pro and you don't have access to control room, then route your microphone into a, a regular input instead. You'll get all of the features. Everything will still work. It's just that if you're doing recording like me for YouTube and you want to, while you're talking about pieces of music and you're soloing tracks, if you click solo, your microphone will cut out. You'll have to explicitly unmute the audio track that the microphone is connected to and then you'll be okay again. That happened a few times to me to the point where it annoyed me enough for me to figure out how control room works. That was the tipping point for me to say, right, screw that. I'm gonna figure out how control room works. Unfortunately, it does exactly the job I want. Totally independent, mixer separate uh, input system with this talkback feature. So that's my IO config for Cubase. In the next uh, episode, we'll bring OBS into the conversation. All of these loose ends, these cables in, in the audio interface that we haven't discussed, the weird routing in Cubase that seems unnecessarily complicated, they all come together when we talk about OBS. Hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.